Hi, Steve from Steve's Makerspace. We are in P5JS. This is part two of a two-part video. In the previous video, I went over rectangle packing, including rotation of the rectangles and using Perlin noise to control that rotation. If you haven't seen that video, I strongly suggest watching that one before watching this. Link is in the video description. In this video, I'll be talking about making centers of rotation to control the rectangle angles and then combining that with the Perlin noise angles, and I'll go over the color in more depth. So let's talk about the second type of rotation, and to do this, I'm first going to uh, get rid of angle one and have only angle two, and I also need to increase the probability that this angle one is gonna be used, and that's what this does. So angle one, remember, was about the Perlin noise field. Uh, this is picking a spot and rotating things around that spot. And if I hit new art, I get that, new art, etc. And I actually have a possibility of two centers of rotation. So there's this second center of rotation. I'll increase the possibility of that one occurring. And then we'll add that one in. So it's angle two and angle three and no Perlin noise. And we get something like this. So there's one point of rotation, there's the other point of rotation, new art, and then maybe I've got one here and here. Oh no, I think I've got another one down here. That one is interesting, I like that. So that looks like the rotation is over here and over here. Then I've also got, oh, I forgot about this. I've got how much influence does this angle have? That's why some of those rotations weren't drastic. Uh, let's change this to one and one. And basically this is saying that this center of rotation is gonna influence by 100% rather than 40%, which is the low end of this. Let's hit start again, and there we go. Now, if I hit start, we're gonna get a more consistent rotation here. So all of it is gonna basically look like that. And to explain this, I'm going to switch to another example, center of rotation on canvas, um, link to this example in the description as well. But uh, here's what it's doing. There, the center is in the middle of the canvas, uh, and you can see any place I put this, it's going to be basically making a circle around the center. So here's my center of rotation. X2 and Y2 is mouse X and mouse Y, but of course that would actually be the center of the rectangle. And to explain this a little bit, let me switch to this uh, website, omnicalculator.com, how to figure the angles and sides of a right triangle. There are several websites that do this sort of thing, but I wanna find the angle of a right triangle. So if you can imagine my center of rotation is gonna be here, and let's say my mouse or my rectangle is right here. So the angle that I'm trying to figure out is right here. So how do I figure that angle? I'm gonna be using B and A, these two sides. So side A is gonna be Y1 minus Y2. Side B is gonna be X1 minus X2. So we figure A and B, and then we're trying to find this angle. So we're supposed to use arctangent of A divided by B. Well, that's what I've done. The angle is arctangent of A divided by B. So in this example, I'm pushing, then translating to my mouse position, rotating by the angle I just calculated here, and then drawing a line, and then I'm popping. So let's go back to the code. And we'll go back up to before we do all of our tries, we're gonna pick a location for our center of rotation, uh, an X2 and a Y2 random width and height, another random location, x3, y3, and then we've got this, how much influence this type of rotation is gonna have. A little while ago, I put this to one, but if I put both of these to 0 0.4, then the rotation isn't quite as drastic. All right, we'll put that back to random now. And then this center one is uh, picking a random number between zero and 10, and I'll explain in just a second why it's doing that. So we'll go down into our tries section, and here, after we've calculated the angle for the noise, we're calculating the angles for the centers of rotation. 
if the center one is less than, and I've been putting this to five, so that was what this was over here. This right here was 10. So uh, there's a five out of 10 chance or half a chance that the center of rotation number one will come into play. And then there's also a five out of 10 chance that center of rotation two will come into play. So if center one is less than five, then we're gonna do our calculations to come up with that angle for angle two. Otherwise, if center one is not gonna be in play, then angle two is just gonna be zero. And then we do the same thing for center two. So our final angle is a combination of the angle one plus the angle two plus angle three so all the time we're getting Perlin noise. Sometimes we get a center of rotation number one. Sometimes we get a center of rotation number two. Uh, and when we do get those centers of rotation, sometimes they're very influential and sometimes they're only a little bit influential. So here you can see that there's a center of rotation here and the rest looks like it's all Perlin noise. This one looks like it has no center of rotation, probably all Perlin noise. This one definitely has a center of rotation that's pretty strong. This one has a center of rotation down here. Okay, so that's everything besides the color. Now what I did was I used a JSON file of a whole bunch of color palettes that are in this format, hex uh, codes. This had been posted to the generative discord by Sumbrov, and he also helped me with a problem I was having loading the colors in. So thank you, Sumerov. So we load the JSON file. We turn it into an array. That's the part that uh, Sumerov helped me with. I couldn't figure out that part. And down in the code, after we figured out that we can place a rectangle in that particular spot, then we're gonna get combo color. And I have a totally different JSON file called color stuff for all my color because I spent a long time working on the color. So we're gonna get a combo color. So first we're gonna get one color and we're gonna do some stuff and we're gonna get a second color and then we're gonna combine those colors. And the way I'm combining those colors, I'm figuring the red, green, blue, combining those together to get an average and I'm only using that for the hue. And the saturation, I'm converting those colors to HSB mode and then I'm coming up with an average saturation from those two colors and an average brightness from those two colors. So there was a lot of stuff I was doing, converting things from hex to RGB to HSB and back to RGB and it was kind of a mess. <laughs> if I had to do this over again, I think I would just use an RGB color table. That way when I used the git function and got the RGB from the canvas, it would be much easier to compare them. And then maybe I would convert to HSB mode so that I could play with the saturation and brightness. So I don't think I'm gonna cover everything that's going on here, but uh, as far as the color goes, there's a chance that Perlin noise is gonna determine the color so that you might see whole sections that have a similar color. Like in this one, there's a lot of green and then down here, there's a lot of yellow. That's because of the Perlin noise but there's also a chance that the color will be random. Uh, not completely random, but based on that color palette. And that's because I want some variation. I don't want it all to be the same color. I've got some code in here that's converting from hex to RGB, and that I got from this location. You can follow that link to see where I got that from. The background is also using Git Combo Color, but I'm doing a few modifications. I'm making the saturation high and the brightness very low so that I get almost a black color, but it might be like a brown or a very dark purple or a dark, very dark blue, but it's going to be some variation from that color palette. And then if we go back to the sketch, I found unfortunately that the color combo was coming up with colors that appeared to be pastel and kind of washed out. So I decided to increase the saturation a little bit and also to decrease the brightness a little bit. And you can also see that I'm giving it some randomness 
in all three of these hue, saturation, and brightness to give it some more variety so that the colors aren't all the same, but they're slightly different. And giving it some variability makes it look a little more natural, more organic. And right before it draws the rectangle, after it's gotten a color, uh, it checks the color that it's gotten against what the color is on the canvas. And it makes sure that it's very different from that color on the canvas. If I had this too close, uh, it would wind up placing rectangles that were the same color. And sometimes it still does. But I had to make sure that they were pretty different from each other. Let me put this back to 70,000. Oh, and I do have here commented out, if you want to comment this in, this is going to fit your available space like so. But you could also make the canvas much larger. Let's do 2,500 by 2,500. And of course, that's going to take longer. It took 4.1 seconds. And you can't see all of it. But we can save a JPEG and then open the file. And that's what that looks like. And it has more detail. Uh, I think we need to up the number of tries we're doing, though. Let's try 170,000. There we go. That took 7.6 seconds. Let's save a JPEG. Open that up. And we get this. And then you can zoom in and see that there's a lot going on here. Let's increase the chance that we'll get really large rectangles to start. So this is pretty cool. I've decreased it to 40,000 tries. I think we could be placing more rectangles, though. Let's put it back to 50,000. Let's stick with 50,000. So that is everything I wanted to cover. Code is in the description. I know that was a lot. I hope you followed it. If you like this video, please give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Your comments are always welcome. I love to read your comments. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.